Hello reformers and welcome back to Mountain Blade Warband. Now, when we left off, we had just returned to the series, of course, and we were kind of not really knowing what to do, and that's kind of a problem a little bit with such a free roaming game like Mountain Blade. It does give you a huge amount of freedom, but as a result, you basically have a really hard time finding out what do I do next? Well, that's the thing. Usually in this stage of the game, you probably want to be fighting a bunch of vassals. You want to be sending off your companions for right to rule. I've actually just done that. I have sent off Beheshtur. Yeah, Beheshtur has gone off and Lezalit has come back. So we're going to get a nice boost in trainer skill because obviously he is, you know, our main trainer. Otherwise, Artimena has finally left our party, as you can see, and Lezalit is now taking up the slack as the engineer, the main engineer now, because obviously making, who was it, who was I going to make the engineer otherwise, Jeremus, I think, he, I, I just think he has too many skills to go with right now, so making Lezalit the engineer, considering he's going to be specking into much more intelligence, makes a little bit more sense to me, because obviously he has a high trainer skill, and he's going to have a high engineering skill, so you know, in theory, having a high intelligence is going to pay off in that respect. Otherwise, what I've been doing is I did fight a vassal. I, I think I fought, was it Count Play or Count Clay? Yeah, in the original series as well, I also had a pretty hard time sort of working out which one was which, because every single time I take out one of them, the other one would appear, and then I'd take out both, and then I'd be like, okay, so who did I kill first? I don't know. <laughs> That's kind of how that went here. But this time we took him on, he had no casualties. Well, actually, we had no casualties whatsoever. He had about 40 units, and they were all very, very easy to kill. I think it was Count Play, actually. Yes, Count Play. So, yes, hopefully we're going to be able to eliminate this guy, Count Clargus, just as easily as we were able to eliminate Count Play. Oh yeah, I should also mention that the Kingdom of Nords has declared war against the Rodox, and there is a very, very large force of Nord vassals heading across the map, and it seems like they were they were preparing for this. They were actually having a kind of staging area for this very eventuality. I'm actually really impressed by the Nords at the moment because they seem to have, well, as I say, been making preparations for the assault against the Rodox because they're all charging across the battlefield at the exact same time. I'm actually going to tell my infantry to charge in right now. And, ooh... The enemy's cavalry is over there. I really don't want to do it this way, do I? No. It seems like we're going to have to go just straight on into them. Didn't really want to do that, but it seems like they have forced my hand slightly because I have to protect our archers, don't I? I mean, look at this. There seems to be one guy coming around the side here. I, I don't know whether he's going to be very successful doing... Yes, he was quite successful with that. He was attempting to lance me, I believe. He was trying to couch lance me, but thankfully he was a little bit too you know, off target for that to happen, and I'm hitting my own units, of course, because that's just what I do. And Barney's just like, oh, what are you doing, you imbecile? And I'm just like, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm very sorry about that. Yeah, sorry about that, Barney. You know me, don't you? And he's like, yes, unfortunately. <laughs> of course, of course. Anyway, it seems like we have them on the run, and we've lost four units to the Grim Reaper, which is really not a big deal. I think one of them was, however, a Saranid Mamluk, so obviously that is a bit of a, eh, you know, a bit of a big deal, but for the most part, we are absolutely fine, so let's just take out these guys. I, you know, it's actually kind of amusing. I was sort of relaxing a little bit with the first fight with Count Clay, because obviously when I'm not recording, I really don't do too much. Obviously, as it is right now, with my current situation and everything, I'm not feeling too good, so obviously I'm not really going to participate too much when I'm off screen. But when I wasn't participating, I was just having a bit of a drink, you know, as you do when you're, when you're going to win a battle very, very easily. I just sat back and allowed my cavalry to charge in, and we gained 17 prisoners just 
from me doing nothing. So even if I do nothing, our army is capable, as you can see, of gaining so many prisoners just, I mean, even without my own blunt weapon doing anything, which is amazing. I'm actually really impressed by that. So hopefully we're going to be able to keep that up because as you see here, I think I was able to gain, I think it was almost 3,000 or maybe about 3,000. I'm actually unsure. I think we had about 4,400 when we left off in the previous episode. And luckily I found a ransom broker and I sold my prisoners from obviously previously, you know, we fought a couple of people in that episode and obviously we did also then ha you know then have the count play excuse me uh, yes the count play uh fight which was off screen of course and well we obviously took 17 from him and then i was able to sell them and it was really very lucrative so i'm hopeful that we'll be able to keep that up and i need some food yes seems like i need some food he managed to escape i'm really sad actually because count play he remembered that we let him go, and he gained five relation from that, which is really quite impressive in my opinion. I'd like to be able to get even more of that, if at all possible. So what we're going to do, I have enough cavalry right now, I think. I have, you know, as you can see, 26 Serenid Mamluks, and then obviously some Slave Chiefs, Sword Sisters, etc., etc. Don't really need any more of those. But maybe what we do need is a couple more archers. As you see here, we have, what is it, 11. We have 11 archers and then 5 skirmishers, but the skirmishers are obviously not very long range. You know, they're using thrown weapons and things. So we probably want to level up some more of these. Hopefully we'll get a little bit more experience as time goes on. And this is exactly what I meant about the Nords coming over to the Rodok territory with an extremely large force. And I think there's probably some coming from Kelradan Castle as well, because why else would they have taken this? You know? Except for the intent to launch an assault against the Rodoks, because obviously they have taken exception to the Rodoks expanding their territory into Praven and Uxkar, and I think that is pretty impressive. As you can see also, the Swadians have rallied, and they have taken Dirim, and I think... Yeah, I think there was a message earlier on when I was off screen that said that the Saranids were now laying siege to that. So there's a huge amount of musical chairs going on. Yes, if you pardon the analogy. And uh, yes, as you can see, so many vassals have been defeated. King Harlaus might actually be exiting relatively soon. Should I wait for him? Should I wait for King Harlaus? Let's see if he decides to come out. I'm just going to speed things up a little bit. Just see whether he decides to come out. If he decides to come out, then we might be able to take him on. I mean, our army isn't that bad. It really depends on what he has. If he has a bunch of knights and things like that, then obviously I think we might be out of our depth. Uh, that's the thing. I need food. I can't just wait here, can I? Uh, I was really hoping that we might be able to take him prisoner, you see, because... As far as I'm aware, whenever you take a king prisoner, you're going to be getting a huge amount of money from the ransom. And I don't think letting a king go is worth the honor rating, to be honest, because you're going to get, what, 10,000, maybe 15,000, I don't know. But, oh, there we go. The Nords have now <laughs> gotten Axkarl under siege. Oh, my. Oh, there's a huge amount going on there. All right. Well, I won't stay in your hair for too long, Nords. I'm going to get out of here as soon as I can. I'm actually going to sell this Tempered Sword. Am I... Am I... Uh, I'm just... I've just been obviously preoccupied with other things, and I've been un unable to give anyone that sword. So I suppose it's about time that I do that. Oh, yeah, I should probably go into the tavern as well. And is there Ransom... Yeah, Ransom Broker. Fantastic. That's exactly what we like to see. All right, so... Yes, yes, give me more money. Yes, give me all the monies. Okay, so that's fantastic. Mercenary cavalry, they're actually pretty good, but expensive. So I'm probably not going to be taking those right now. And who could use a new sword? Probably Borcher. Well, he's using a Tempered Falchion. That's actually pretty good. I mean, the reach is not very good. Jeremus is obviously using a strange sword. 
And Ferentis? Ferentis is using a mm, flanged mace. Okay, I'm going to give him the Tempered Sword because a flanged mace, I mean, it's 23 blunt damage. That's pretty good against heavy armored units. But I think the Tempered Sword would do him better because obviously he's riding on a horse and that gives him a little bit more reach, a little bit more adaptability, you know, that sort of thing. So we're going to see what happens. This is easily going to get taken. Oxcar is going to get taken so easily. Count Rafard. Count Rafard is here. I'm basically just demonizing the Swadians right now. Actually, not demonizing. Wow, what is the, what is the word now? Uh, I can't remember the word, but I'm basically just hounding them. I am hounding them so much that they, they probably hate us very, very much right now. <laughs> they certainly do. All right, so... Ah, I'm unsure what to do. I am unsure because obviously, as you can see, King Harlaus has left. I'm not entirely sure where he's... Mm, he's probably going to... Look at that. We've taken Dirim. The Saranids have taken Dirim. Obviously, we are not... Ah, there's King Harlaus. Yeah, we will be able to take him. We will be able to take him on. Let's do this. 80 versus 80. This could not be more even in terms of our forces. Hello. Hello, King Harlaus. Okay, let's do this. All right, this is oh, this is going to be interesting. This is going to be very interesting. Okay, so let's see if he charges straight on in. We have sixty-three both on the fields of battle, so we have no advantage either way. He only has one Swadian knight, but he does have eleven Swadian man at arms, which I'm a little bit worried about because they they do you know come equipped with lances and things like that, and I'm a little bit. Uh, a little bit worried about that. Anyway, let's get our archers over here, and we're going to obviously get our infantry into a nice position too. You do have to bear in mind that he might have some sharpshooters, because I didn't actually check for that. I was literally only checking for his cavalry forces. Probably a mistake, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Okay, so this is a bit worrying, because if he charges his cavalry into our infantry, we're probably going to lose a bunch of them. But if I go around and kill his archers going to tell my infantry to charge straight on in right now because they are being peppered with crossbow bolts. Now if the cavalry goes around the infantry then we are going to have a really really bad situation on our hands. They might decide to do that, I don't know, but as you can see our cavalry is swinging around very very nicely. We are losing quite a few of our infantry but that is their job. You know they are supposed to distract the enemy's cavalry for the most part and hopefully at, th well, at this point we, we might have a bit more of an advantage. Oh, my hammer is really nice. I actually really like my hammer, even though it's not doing that much damage against most units, it does consistent damage. So it's doing about 20 to 50 damage per hit. Oh, maybe 60, dependent on your speed bonus, obviously, but it's doing pretty nice damage to everything. And that's what I quite like about blunt weapons. I might obviously change as time goes on, because I seem to remember that the original Barney you know, the Barney that all of these Mountain Blade series have spawned from. He used a military cleaver, if I recall correctly. Yes, he used a military cleaver with a... What was it now? I don't think it was a lordly shield or anything like that. I think it was just a thick Nordic shield or a thick Huskal shield or something along those lines. I'm, I, I can't remember, but I think it was definitely a Nordic shield of some sort. Oh, and it seems like I have literally just allowed our cavalry to charge in against the reinforcements. I think that's absolutely fine because we seem to have eliminated most of the men-at-arms. So that should be fine. Can I just make a terrible joke though? Where are the men-at-legs? Yeah, I, I thought I'd just pause there for the overwhelming facepalm. Oh yes. <laughs> anyway. We are now done with King Harlaus. Now, cross your fingers, everyone. Cross your fingers. And let us hope that we are able to take him prisoner. Aw, I'm a little bit... Oh, I'm a little bit sad by that. Oh, well, never mind. Yeah, I'm, I'm more disappointed than sad, to be honest. Because, you know, it's just a game. But it would have been really, really useful to have that 10,000 or whatever amount they would have given us for his ransom. And obviously taking him off the game board, as it were, would have been very useful to us indeed. Because, well, technically useful to the Saranids, because they're still obviously at war. 
against the Swadians, and it probably would have made things a little bit easier, but we have technically taken him off the game board once again. Oh, I've taken skirmishers instead of infantry. That's probably not a good idea. There we go. All right. Ah, that's a nice horse. I'm going to take that horse. Very nice. That is a nice upgrade for our horse right there. All right. Otherwise, mm, yeah, no, that's fine. Yeah, that's good. Aha, uh -huh. Jeremus has also advanced in level. Uh, okay, so this is where it gets a little bit... Um, well, it actually doesn't get that muddy. I was going to say it gets a little bit muddy here because I'm unsure what to spec into, but I think I actually know what I'm going to spec into. He does have one point in engineering, but I think that speccing any more is redundant because obviously Lezolith is going to be focusing on that. We're going to be going for some Power Strike and Iron Flesh so that he can get a couple more kills and, as a result, hopefully level up a little bit faster. So let's level up some more skirmishers there. And, yeah, we do have ten more spaces. I have a bunch of prisoners as well. Shall we go to Axkarl? Oh, there's a siege going. Ugh, oh, how annoying. Uh, yes, I was very much hoping that the multitudes of slaughter that are currently going on here by the Kingdom of Nords was hopefully going to be delayed a little bit so that I could maybe, you know, go back to the Ransom Broker. But, ah, what is King Graveth actually doing? <laughs> this is very weird. Okay, so I have campaign AI on normal. Usually I play with it on low because I absolutely loathe the grinding situations that you get into. But I find it a bit weird because as far as I'm aware, the campaign AI also affects the overworld map. You know, the control of the AI on the overworld map. And I'm really kind of a bit perplexed why King Graveth is being so weird. I mean, surely he would like to go over here and take Uxcar. Well, defend Uxcar, should I say. But maybe there's just too many Nords, as you can see. I mean, there's, what is it? I don't know, 700, 800 there? I don't know. There's a huge amount there. So I don't blame him, actually. I don't blame him in sort of staying away from the action and maybe launching a counteroffensive elsewhere. That's probably the smart move. Anyway, that will be it for this episode. I thank you very much for watching and for all of your well wishes. They are greatly appreciated. Very, very much so, actually. Anyway, I will see you next time.